Last week, the team that I work on at EWS Amplify launched new Map UI components. I wanted to take this opportunity to show you what you can build using Amplify Geo and Amplify Studio together. I'm an avid hiker and All Trails is one of my favorite sites. I duplicated a very, very small portion of their UI for this tutorial. At the end, we'll have a user interface that looks like this. You have different hikes on the side that you can search. And then you also have geo markers on a map. You can click on these and get a pop-up about the hike itself. We can do this in about 10 steps that don't require a ton of custom logic from us. Let's dive in. First, I'll head to the AWS console. I'm going to go to the Amplify console once I'm in there. Now I'll select build an app. Then I'll choose an app name and confirm deployment. This will take a few minutes to create an instance of Amplify Studio. Now that I have a Studio instance, I'm going to click Launch Studio. Now, step two is to create a data model. I'll click Create Data Model right here. I'll add a model, and it'll be called Hike. It'll have several fields, name, difficulty, location, lat, long, length, time, cover image, latitude, longitude, and length should all be floats. The others can remain as strings. Now I'm gonna save and deploy. Now that my data model is deployed, I'm gonna to go to the content tab and add a couple hikes. In order to find the latitude and longitude of something, you can always just Google the name of the trail and then latitude and longitude, and it should come up on Google. Step three is enable authentication. I'm just gonna deploy the defaults. In this application, I'm not going to build an authentication flow, but I do need to enable it for Amplified Geo. The map needs to have authentication enabled. If you do wanna add a full login flow, I'll link in the description to a video that I built on how to do that. Step four is to modify some UI components in Figma. I'll go to the UI library tab and click Get Started. From here, you can use this Figma template in order to build out components. I'll duplicate this to my Figma account. If you haven't used Figma before, it's a design software similar to something like Sketch or Adobe XD, and you can use it to prototype your application and how it will look. I'm gonna zoom in onto this Card B component, and I am going to round the corners on this card and I'll do the same with the image as well. Now the corners are rounded. I'm also going to add an outline. I'll do an opacity of 40% to make it less dark and I'll make it a 0.2 width. This will just make it so that the card pops on the background. I'm going to go grab a button from the primitives page. I'll copy this small button move on to my component and move my button to there. I'm also going to make this into two different text fields. I'll call this group hike length and I'm going to change the text on both of these to just be much shorter. So now both links are aligned next to each other. They're grouped together and I'll add the dot within Amplify Studio. I'm going to go ahead and also delete all these other components that I won't be using. Now I'll go ahead and paste this into Figma. I'll accept all of my components, even though there's just one. Now I'll click into my component and I'll configure. First, I'll go ahead and set the image source of the image at the top of the card. I'll set it to the hike.cover image. Now I'll click what currently says 99 USD and set the label to hike name. I'll set this to the hike location. I'll set the text of the button to be the hike.difficulty. I don't want this to actually be a button, I just want it to be a badge. So I'll convert it to be a div. I'll set the as prop to div. 
Now I'll select this time and set the label to the hike time. And then I'll concatenate it with a space and then a dot. Now I'll set this text label to the hike dot length. Then I'm gonna concatenate that with space miles. Now all my data is plugged into this card. Now I'm gonna create a collection because I want to display all my hikes on the page. I'll call it hikes. I'll include pagination and search, and you can also filter and sort different records. I'm good in this case, but that is an option. My next step is to set this up locally. First, I'll go ahead and create a React app. I'll change into the directory that I created and install the Amplify Libraries and UI components. Now that I've installed the Amplify Libraries, I'm going to clone my Amplify app locally. I'll click the local setup instructions, copy, and then paste. If you're prompted, select yes, select your text editor, JavaScript, React, and just all the defaults. I'll just press enter over and over again. I'll start a React server and open up my code locally. I'll first go to my index.js file. I'll import Amplify from AWS Amplify. I'll import config from the AWS exports file. I'll import the Amplify provider component. And I'll import the Amplify CSS file. I'll make the Amplify provider component the top level of my application. This will make it so that there are styles passed to all my child components. I'll also run amplify.configure with my config object. Now I'll go to my app.js file. I'm going to import my hikes component. Within UI components, you'll see that I have two different things, my card B and my hikes. These look like human readable of React, so they have props that you can pass there. They also have the ability to be overridden, which you can read about in the documentation I'll link below. I'll clear out what's there now, and I'll make a top level container div. I'll also create an instance of the hikes. If I refresh my page, you'll see that I have all my hikes listed. They're listed twice because I've built this application a couple times, so don't mind that. The next step is adding Amplify Geo. I'll go to my command line interface and run Amplify Add Geo. I'm gonna add a map. I'll use the default name. I'll allow authorized and guest users. And I don't need advanced settings. Now I'm gonna run Amplify Push. This is going to deploy Amplify Geo in the cloud. Now I'll go back to my text editor. I'm gonna add an instance of the map view component. By default, it'll be a map of the whole world. I want to just zoom in on Colorado, which is where all my hikes are. I'll pass in the initial view state object. I'll set the latitude and longitude to be Colorado. So now the map will be centered on Colorado, and I also want to choose a zoom level. You may just want to play around with this until you get to something that you like. So now my map is centered on Colorado. Note that the map view component was auto imported using Amplify's React components. Now I wanna add markers to my map for each hike. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is query to get all my hikes. So I'll import my hike model. I'll also import use state and use effect from React. I'll create an empty array in state for my hikes. I'll create a use effect. And I'll run await datastore.query for my hikes. I'll need to import datastore from AWS Amplify. Now I'll run the get hikes function and also make sure to set hikes with the hikes that I get back from the query. Now I'll make this map view so it's no longer self-closing and map through my hikes and create an instance of a marker for each. We'll make sure to import the marker from React Map GL. To the marker, I'll pass the latitude of the hike. The longitude of the hike, 
and then a key for it since we're looping through them. Now you can see that my hikes have appeared on the map. The last thing that I want to do is make it so that there's a pop-up on the markers. So what I'm gonna do is create a second component, marker with pop-up. It'll take a hike, the latitude, and the longitude. I'll set a state attribute for whether or not it is displayed. By default, it won't be displayed. I'll also create an event handler for the handle marker click. That'll set the show pop-up to true. And then I'll return a React component. I'll actually move the marker up to there. I'll no longer need the key either. If show pop-up is true, then I'll also return a pop-up. I'll need to import the pop-up from React MapGL again. Inside the pop-up, I'm going to display the card B component, which I'll need to import, and I'll pass the hike to it. The pop-up will also need the latitude, longitude, an offset, an on close event, which will set the show pop-up to false. I'll also pass in a max width, which will be set to 95%. This is just so that the X shows up slightly inside of the card B. I'll also pass in close on move. Instead of just creating an instance of the marker component, I'll need to do the marker with pop-up. I'll do latitude, longitude, hike, and key. The hike will be the full hike object. The key will be the hike.rd. And I'll pass the latitude and longitude from the hike to that marker with pop-up. I also needed to change the e.prevent default to e.original event.stoppropagation. That'll make it so that instead of doing the grippy, uh, I instead am able to click on one of these. The only thing left is I need to style this a little bit. I'll clear out the index CSS. I'll import a font. Now you'll see that it's a sans serif. I'll do a display flex on the container to make it so that the two are displayed side by side. I'm going to go ahead and hide the background from all of these pop-ups. I'm setting the background color to transparent, the box shadow to none, the border radius to none, the Z index to be five so that the X is on top of the component and the max width to 95%. Please forgive the importance. It's the only way I get the cascade to work on the different pop-ups. I'll also add some styling to the close button so that it's white, bigger, bolder, and has some padding too. And now your application should have working pop-ups with close buttons. In this tutorial, we used Amplify Studio, the Amplify command line interface, and the Amplify UI components to build out a map interface. If you want to delete the resources used in this tutorial, you can run Amplify Delete in your command line interface. I'd love to hear your feedback as you build with Amplify, especially since Studio is still in developer preview at the time of this recording. Please like and subscribe to this channel so that you can see the next tutorial that I put out.